Hi everyone, in this video we're going to work through an example of how to use the chi-square test. So the chi-square test is a statistical method that can be applied to data in order to identify if there is a statistically significant association between two factors. So let's start working through our example. Um, one thing that we notice in people is that they tend to show a dominance towards handedness. Um, we generally classify people as being left-handed or right-handed depending on the, uh, the dominant, dominance in the use of one of those hands or preference for one of those hands. Uh, another thing that we uh, can see in a number of people or in population is that when clasping our hands together, people tend to have a preference for which thumb sits on top of the other. So um, does the right thumb sit on top of the left or does the left sit on top of the right? So based on these observations, we ask a question, is there a relationship or an association between handedness and thumb clasping? So what that means is, is uh, if for example you are right handed, are you more likely to have a right thumb sitting on top of your left? Or if you are right handed, are you more likely to have your left thumb sitting on top of your left? So we need to come up with a... Um, a question which we have, is there a relationship or an association between handedness and thumb clasping? The next thing we do is form our hypothesis. And there are two hypotheses that we state. Um, the first one is called our null hypothesis. And this is strange, but this is actually a hypothesis that we're trying to reject. Um, or not trying to reject, but um, that's what our statistical method was, will allow us to do. So the null hypothesis states that there is no relationship between those two factors. Um, there's no relationship between hand clasping preference and handedness, so our statistics should fail to show a relationship. The alternative hypothesis, and that's what it's called, is that there is a relationship between hand clasping preference and handedness. We haven't necessarily stated what that is, whether right handed individuals um, prefer left, the left thumb on top, or right handed individuals prefer the right thumb on top. All we're asking is, is there an association between handedness and thumb preference. So what we then do is we set up a table that will look like this and this will allow us to go and survey individuals in a population. We'll try and collect uh, a large sample size and um, we'll just record frequencies into each of these different um, cells here. So the chi-square test is useful for dealing with frequency data not measurements. So we're not really measuring anything here, we're just using counts of things. So what we'll do from here is we'll, um, we'll enter our data from the survey of people, whether they are right-handed or left-handed, and whether they have a right thumb on top or left thumb on top. Um, and after that, we'll be able to progress with using the chi-square test. Okay, so we've now formed our two hypotheses, and it would be time now to start collecting some data. So let's imagine we've gone and surveyed uh, some of the population, um, and we've created this table here to record uh, the data that we collect from the survey. And what we would do is indicate the number of individuals that fall into each of these four categories. Let's say that um, of the people we surveyed, 190 individuals uh, were right-handed with the right thumb on top, 149 individuals were right-handed with left thumb, on, left thumb on top, that gave us a total of 339 there. Um, let's assume that 42 of the individuals we surveyed were left-handed with right thumb on top, and 49 were left-handed, left thumb on top. And that gives us a total of 91 individuals who were left-handed. That also gives us a total of 232 individuals who had the right thumb on top preference, and 198 individuals who had the left thumb on top preference. And this gives us a grand total of 430 individuals surveyed. So the reason I've calculated the totals is because they're, an, uh, they're important in us calculating our chi-squared value. So I have my frequencies in this table here. Another uh, value that I need or is expected for a chi-squared test is uh, what we actually call expected values. And we need to calculate those. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what they are, what expected values are right now and the meaning of them. Um, just know that we need to calculate what the expected value for each of these cells is. And the way we can do that, I'm just going to call this expected value, um, is equal to our row total, our row total, brackets, oh sorry, not quite bracket, row total multiplied 
by our column total. Column total. So that's why the calculating the totals are important. So our expected value is equal to our row total multiplied by our column total and then divided by our grand total. So for the data we've got here, let's plug those values um, into here. So we're just going to move up a little bit. Alright, so right thumb and right handed. So our row total was 339. 339, um, and we multiply that by our column total, which is 232. So our row total and our multiplied by our column total, and then we're going to divide that by 400. Oh, by 430. So divide that by 430. Now, if you run that through a calculator, um, we get 183. All right. So I'll just quickly show you that. All right, so we have 339 multiplied by 232, right, which equals 78,648. Divide that by 430, and we get 182.9. So I've just rounded that up to 183. So what we can then do is use that same um, equation for our other categories here. So let's now look at our left thumb right-handed. So again, our row total is 339. And we're going to multiply this by our um, column total, which is 198. And then again, divide by our grand total of 430. And this is going to come to a value of 156. Okay, our next one for left-handed. So we have a row total of 91. Oh, brackets first. Um, and we multiply that by our column total of 232. And we divide that by 430, and that's going to give us an expected value of 49. And then our last one here for left thumb um, and left handed is 91 for our row total multiplied by our column total of 198. And then we divide that by our grand total of 430. And this is going to give us a value of 42. So again, just run those through a calculator. I've probably rounded them up um, there. So run them through a calculator, just see what you get. All right, let's just remind ourselves of our totals and just to make our um, table complete. Now, you normally do this at the start, so you could quickly refer to those, but I was just looking at the table on the left. So we'll just complete this. 430, um, 232, and 198. Now... I've just written those in looking at this. I was referring to the numbers up here, but it would have been good if I didn't have that table on the left to ensure I had the totals there, which I could refer to. So what we've done now is we have um, formed a hypothesis. We've gone and collected our data and categorized it here just as um, frequency counts. We've then used our totals and our values to work out what are called expected values, 183, 156, 49, and 42. Now that we've calculated those, we can apply our chi-squared formula. Right, now, the chi-squared formula looks like this. Um, the symbol x to the power of 2 is our uh, symbol for chi-squared, and it's equal to the sum. This is the mathematical symbol for the sum of our observed value minus our expected value squared divided by our expected value. All right, so our chi-squared value is equal to the sum of all our observed values minus our expected values um, squared over expected. Now, we can do each of these equations separately, um, which sort of makes this a little bit easier. So uh, this symbol here equals the sum of all of these, oh, all of these things here. I haven't circled that very well, so I won't circle it again. All right, so let's have a look. I've uh, got a table over here that's going to allow us to do this with a little bit more ease, just so you can clearly see where the numbers are going. So we've got a table here which we'll uh, break down some values into. So we can recall that our right thumb, right-handed uh, observed value was 190. 190 individuals fit into that category. 149 fit into our obs uh, observed left thumb on top for right-handed people. 
Um, then we have 183 was the expected value that we calculated um, for this. And again, we'll look over here and it's uh, this value here, 183. All right, our expected value for left thumb on top and uh, right-handed was 156. For our left-handed individuals, we had an obs observed value of 42 for left-handed right thumb on top and an expected value of 49. And then for our left thumb on top and left-handed, we have an observed value of 49 and an expected value of 42. So now we can plug these values into this equation here. Now, this equation, uh, as you'll recall, is from our chi-squared um, equation. And basically what we're going to do is work out each of these individually and then add them together, and that will give us um, our x-squared value. So if we were to look at this one here, 190 um, minus, so observed minus expected minus 183, and then we square that, and we divide it by our expected, which is 183. If you run this through a calculator, that will give you a result of 0 0.27. So let's just have a quick look at that. We'll bring a calculator up here. Okay, so just to prove this, let's go 190 minus 183 equals 7, and we'll square that, 49, and then divide that by 183. That will give us 0 0.27, uh, rounded up to two significant figures. All right, so if you're using a calculator, you can just plug it in like that. Let's go ahead and do the other ones now. So here we have our observed value of 149. Um, and, we're, oh, and we're going to minor, um, subtract our 149 from, 100, oh, from 156. Sorry, we'll get rid of that. Uh, and that will be squared, and then we divide that by our value of 156, our expected value. And this uh, comes to 0 0.31. Down here, we have... Uh, an observed value of 42 minus our expected value of 49 squared and then we can uh, divide that by our expected value of 49 that will come to a value of 1 and just make sure that doesn't look like an L or an I and then our last one was 49 was our observed value minus our expected value of 42 and square that and then divide it by our expected value of 42 and this equals 1.17. So now what we've done is we have calculated and uh, we've run this equation for each of the four different um, factors or possible categories and now what we need to do is add them together. If we find the sum of these things then we have our chi-squared value according to this equation. Oh, too far. So the sum here. So let's add them together and, uh, and see what value we get. So 0 0.27 uh, is this value and we'll add that to 0 0.31 which is this value and then we'll add that to 1 which is this value here and we'll add our final value here of 1.17. So just adding these together um, and if you run those through your head, you'll come up with an answer of 2.75. That's very messy, 2.75. So this is um, our x squared value, our chi squared value. So based on the um, results we've got here, we've come up with a chi squared value of 2.75. Now, next thing we need to do is take this value and we need to figure out if this is a statistically significant figure. Um, then it, before we do that, we can, we're going to measure this against a, a table of probability. Um, I am going to, well, we, we all need to work out a value uh, which is called our degree of freedom. Degree of freedom. Again, I won't go into any detail about why, uh, what this is or why we do it. We're just going to look at how we calculate it and I'll save explanations for another video. 
So our degree of freedom can be calculated using this equation. Um, df equals m minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1. And m minus 1 is, I'll wait for that to stop, m is the number of rows in our table, number of rows, and n is our number of columns. So we had two rows and we had two columns, so 2 minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1, so again we're just substituting those numbers into the equation here, um, is going to equal 1 multiplied by 1. So we have one degree of freedom. All right, so now that number there is going to be significant in a very um, in a very short time. I'll tell you where we're going to use this number. All right, so we have our chi-squared value here. We've got one degree of freedom is a value that we've been given. What we now need to do is compare these values or find where this value sits um, in a table of critical values. And that is what this thing here is. So our chi-squared value was 2.75. Uh, 2 Let's bring this up. So our x squared value was equal to 2.75, and we had one degree of freedom. Now let's just read what it says up here quickly. It states that the critical values of chi-square at different levels of probability are given in this table. By convention, um, in statistics and uh, in biology, we um, allow a critical, uh, sorry, by convention, the critical probability for rejecting a null hypothesis is 5%. So if the test statistic, and this is our test statistic here, 2.75, is less than the tabulated critical value for p equals 0.05, p equals probability, we cannot reject the null hypothesis and the result is not significant. If the test statistic here is greater than the tabulated value for p equals 0.05, we reject our null hypothesis in favour of the alternative hypothesis. So our um, critical value is um, for our chi square is 2.75. Now we have one degree of freedom to work with. So what we do on this table here is we look at this row. This is our row for one degree of freedom. And we go across here and find where our chi squared value fits in. So it's not fitting any at the moment. So now I get to 2.75. This is very close. But 2.75 is slightly higher than 2.71. So it's going to be somewhere in here between 0.10 and 0.05. So you notice that these numbers get higher along here, all right, as these numbers get smaller. So 2.75 is less than 3.84, and 3.84 here is a value we would need at least 3.84 or higher to reject our null hypothesis, and um, therefore our data would be in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Our value of 2.75 is, uh, is less than 3.84. So what that means is that from the data we have collected, we have not been able to show a statistically significant relationship between handedness and um, preference for left thumb or right thumb on top. If our value had been 3.84, if our chi-squared value had been 3.84 or higher, um, then we would be sitting somewhere in here. So 0.05, um, that category there means, the level of probability means a 95% probability level that we are, that we could accept our hypothesis. Um, 0.02 is 98%, 0.01 is 99%. So as you move up this way, as your number here gets larger, the higher the probability that there is actually a relation, a statistically significant relationship between the data that we've looked at. All right, so at this point, what we can say is we cannot reject our null hypothesis because our x squared value is less than the um, value in our tabulated value here for 95%. All right, so now that you've watched this video, um, we've gone through and let's just quickly do a quick review. Starting back here, we were interested in finding out if there was a relationship between handedness and thumb clasping. We stated two hypotheses, a null hypothesis, which states that there is no relationship between our um, hand clasping preference and handedness. And then our alternative hypothesis, was, which stated that there was a relationship. We then went out and surveyed the population, or a sample of the population, 430 individuals, and we categorized the number of individuals that fit into each of these um, categories here. 
So 190 individuals were right-handed with the right thumb on top, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We also calculated the total for each row and each column, and these values were necessary in calculating what are known as expected values. The expected values were necessary for us to uh, to do our chi-squared calculations, and we did. We calculated these values for each of the different categories. We then added them together because the sum of all of these values is our chi-squared value. We then, well, that's what we did here, here, sorry. Um, so we calculated our chi-squared value and it ended up being 2.75. We then calculated our degree of freedom, which was equal to our number of rows minus one multiplied by our number of columns minus one. And in any two by two table like we had over here, so uh, four categories or two by two, not including the totals, obviously. Um, your degree of freedom was always going to be one. And once we knew our chi-squared value and we knew the degree of freedom that we had to work with, we could go over to our table here, find the degree of freedom in this uh, in this row, or sorry, in this column of degrees of freedom, and then move along um, through the different probability values until we find a range or a point at which our value fits. We found that ours is somewhere between 0.10 and 0.05. However, in order for us to reject our null hypothesis, it needs to be 0.05 or greater. So we could not reject our null hypothesis. All right, now it's time for you to work through some examples of your own. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, good luck.